Jarvis, what video are we creating today? Some viewers are finding writing formulas difficult. One of the comments was, the toughest part for me is to learn formula writing. So I scheduled this for today. Jarvis, what's a good place to start to create formulas? Actually, sir, before you even start looking at formulas, you should be clear about what you want to create. The best thing to do is to write down a clear sentence around the logic that we want in our formula. Good point, Jarvis. What next? I would look up the formula in the Notion pages and look for which formula would kind of do the trick. Sometimes you need to identify a few that would help in the logic. One important thing to remember is that some formulae generate text as an output, some numbers, and some dates. So, if you try and combine some of these into the same formula, you need to select the output format that you want, and accordingly, convert the others to the output format. For example, a date formula generates date, but the format date formula generates a text that looks like a date. Great points, Jarvis. So let's start with something we did a few videos ago. We covered the Eisenhower matrix on time management priorities. This covered prioritization, considering importance and urgent as two axis. Why don't we add by expanding it to another dimension, effort? Good idea, sir. So Jarvis, what formula is the most relevant here? I can see that we are going to make choices based on importance, urgent, and effort. So the if formula is the most relevant. But since the if formula can be written in two ways, one with the if statement and one without, which one are you going to choose for this example? Let's go with the one without the if, which is simpler for beginners to understand. Okay. I just wanted to tell the viewers that the logic for writing out the formula with an if statement is exactly the same. Good. Let's create an inline database table with five columns. Let's now insert the table into a fresh page but create it inline so that we can add our own notes to the bottom. The first column is the task. We just edit the name of the column as task instead of name. The second, third and fourth columns are checkbox columns. Let's name them important, urgent and effort. Now let's understand the possible combinations. You could have picked all three, two of them, one of them or none. So we have eight combinations. If you look at using the Eisenhower matrix as the frame, the important column gets maximum priority when it's combined with urgent. Since effort requires more time, it actually pulls down priority in this method, right? I would agree, sir. Let's add a column and call it score. It's a number column. The objective is to assign a score we would want if this combination is selected when we review the task. Based on the logic that we just discussed, task number two, which has important and urgent defined, gets a score of nine. And when all three are ticked, we assign the score as seven. Let's give the one which is important and requires higher effort, the score of six. The one that's urgent and has a higher effort, also a score of six. The one that's only important, an eight, the one that is only urgent, a 2, and the one that has effort and none with a score of 0. Since these are not tasks, you should be focused on. That looks fair, sir. So let's start with the if statement. How would you explain it, Jarvis? In plain English, just considering the first task, I would say that if all three conditions are true, then I would assign it a score of 7. Let's write out that in a formula. Just a note. Each column is called a property and we ask Notion to recognize it by saying prop. We need to define the property name within quotes. So we say prop important and prop urgent and prop effort equal to true question mark. The checkbox returns true if ticked and false if it is not ticked. Sir, as you were writing the formulae, I noticed that the brackets came up automatically. How did you do that? Good observation, Jarvis. I use a Mac app called Typeinator, and that just closes the bracket or the quote when I open one. All I need to do then is to type within this. After this, I would leave a space and then give out the result, which is seven in this case. 
This is what I want Notion to print out as the result in the column. The only thing left here is to add a colon at the end. This gives closure to the formula for the true part of the story. And whatever I say next will be the false side of the story. In task 2, we only have important and urgent, but the result is 9. Now that you've understood the logic of writing this out, let me write out the others in high speed. Okay, we have written out all the conditions except for the ones with the zeros. Because this is the remainder if we don't fulfill all other conditions. So we end the formula with zero. Just a reminder here, to close all the brackets, we need to have the same number of brackets as we open them with. Now that you've closed the formula, you can validate whether the formula is generating the right results by comparing the formula against the score column. If they match, then you've written out the formula correctly. If not, you need to revisit that part of the formula which is not rendering the same result. This is the reason why I write out my formula logically first below the database table. Jarvis, let's do one more formula. What do you want to do to add to a task? Sir, normally a task would have a due date. So let's do a formula with the date and get the formula to print out the day of the week. Would that be fine? Good idea, Jarvis. Let's add a column and call it due date. This will be a date field. Now let's add another formula column called day of the week. DOW for short. The formula we will use is format date. As soon as you type format date, you also notice that the syntax comes to you immediately. As soon as you open a bracket, the syntax disappears. To get it back, you get the cursor before the bracket opens and click here and you can see the syntax again. Now let's add the property, which is the due date in this case. Now we just want the day of the week. You have two options. One is to have a three letter day or a full day. So Friday could be called FRI or Friday in full. So after the comma, you enter within quotes DDD in small. If you enter big, then it returns the day of the year calculated from January 1. I just wanted to reiterate to the viewers that a format date has converted the date into a text field. So you can't really do calculations with this field in this shape and form. Thanks Jarvis. Did you learn something new from today's video? Do comment below. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you liked the video, do consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.